Hey guys, I have a big surprise for you today. This is, we're gonna do a garden tour of a very, one of my best friends. In fact, she's such a good friend that she introduced my husband and I, and one of my oldest friends. I've known her forever. She's very dear to me. And she recently moved into this old house. It's also in an historic neighborhood in Oklahoma City, a different one than my own. And Stuart, if you don't mind, and I apologize, there's lots of tree trimming going on around here because we're still cleaning up from the storms of last year. But if you could kind of just do a sweep of what her view is, this magnificent park and these wonderful old homes that are in Oklahoma City and it, it's, it's full circle. You can see some of them are still being restored. But this is a wonderful old neighborhood. I can't remember if she's part of Mesta Park or Heritage Hills, probably Heritage Hills. They kind of abut up against each other. But it's just a beautiful, beautiful house and she has done a marvelous job with it. So I asked her if we could do a garden tour of the front of her house. And so let's, let's do that. I'm gonna show you the front of the house and the side yard with some of her plantings. But let's come around here. In fact, Stuart, let's pretend like we're just coming here to visit. She's not home today. But if you were visiting her home, this is the beautiful approach that there would be and Stuart described it, I think, so well. He said, this home is just so stately and it really is so beautiful. I think it was built in the 1920s. I should have gotten more details on that from her before we did this video, but it's, it's really just beautiful. It's not overly fussy, overly done, but not only is it gorgeous, it's also very practical living inside and out. So let's first start with the lawn, I guess. So in Oklahoma, a lot of people, as does my friend, they have a fescue lawn. And a fescue is a cool weather grass that needs to be overseeded here in Oklahoma every fall. So they have already overseeded for this year. It does demand uh, regular irrigation, so a sprinkler system is pretty much crucial if you have fescue. Uh, she's the beneficiary of some really beautiful stately trees. Some of hers were also damaged in the storm, but they're coming, but they're starting to come back. I believe that is a sugar gum over there. Beautiful, beautiful color and she's got a maple over here. So, but let's start out, this would be the western side. She faces south, and that's important as I show you some of her plantings because it's amazing to me that some of this stuff does so, so well with this aspect. So over here, she's got what I believe are Nellie Stevens hollies, um, and they make Nellie Stevens in general are, are wonderful plants. They have so many merits for different reasons. One of them being that they make a great screen. So she's got some privacy here on the west side, though the house next to her is absolutely beautiful. But she's got some privacy on the west side. I like the way she's got them trimmed up. They could also grow all the way to the ground. But another reason that I love them is because they do so well in Oklahoma. They are really a tough evergreen that can handle intense heat and intense cold. And we have had both extremes here recently. So that's a pretty wonderful thing. Um, she obviously is doing some planting over here with some things. She's got lots of hostas in the back. I think she's got maybe even some rhododendrons here and she's got lots of these look to probably be green mountain boxwoods here. And you can see that she just recently overseeded because you see a little bit of that fescue coming up in her flower beds. Now I don't point that out because she's not a fastidious gardener, she really is. But I point that out because it's, it's pretty easy 
to pull out, but also if you're considering overseeding your lawn, a lot of people overseed obviously their fescue in the fall, but they also overseed their Bermuda grass with a perennial rye, like Arnold Palmer rye or, or one of the fine, fine bladed rye grasses. And if you do that, and if you're going to try to do that yourself, here's a tip. You don't want to use a rotary spreader to spread the seed because it will just jettison seed out everywhere, including sometimes in your flower beds. You want to use a drop spreader. And you can sometimes, if you don't want to buy one, you can, you can rent one one or borrow one from a local nursery or from a friend. But if you're going to do that kind of overseeding, that's a tip. This would be a brilliant place for me to come and pick some leaves to do one of my leaf bouquets that I am so loving this year. And this one would be all in scarlet. Her trees are already changing. Mine are not, and I don't know what kind of maple this is. If it's some kind of sugar maple, I bet. It might be an October Glory, um, maybe Autumn Blaze. I'm not really sure. But I mean, the colors, the colors of the foliage is just incredible. So look here, I could make a beautiful, beautiful leafy bouquet. And that would be very, very fun. Or she could just take some of these and bring them in and just, just kind of cluster them all about, dribble them all about, and it would be beautiful inside. It's that kind of inside, outside uh, garden lifestyle. Oh, I, I can't resist these two over here, Stuart. I'm sorry. Because they're just so beautiful. One of the best things about fall. So let's continue on this side. Her plantings are fairly simple. Um, she had a mass of New Guinea impatiens, which I'll, I'll show you later, of orange New Guinea impatiens that she had in front here. You can see that there's probably, it looks like a couple of them maybe went to seed, if that's what those are, I'm not 100% sure. You can see she's got osmocote down. Her soil is something to be coveted by all of us. And she got her pansies in a lot earlier than I normally do. And she obviously loves orange. She's got orange and yellow, it looks like. She really loves intense, bright primary colors. So she's got that, a whole section of them arching around to her front porch. Now here's, here is a lesson and something that I am I am considering and also kind of squirreling away for my next garden in the next couple of years or whatever. And that's that she has lots of negative space. Everything is not completely filled in. So she has more simplicity and I really like that. The downside to that is there's more weeding that needs to be done. But nevertheless, it's, this is an absolutely beautiful west side facade to her home. She's got what looks to be, I think that's Boston Ivy that's kind of getting started. And it's just simple and elegant. So let's approach right here. She's got a mass of variegated liriope, which is a beautiful contrast against the red brick. Uh, let's see here. This might answer our question on when the home was built. So she also has a plaque. This was built in 1926. She is in Heritage Hills National Register of Historic Places. So those of us that live in older homes, a lot of us have these kind of plaques. So in her pots here, she's got Mandevilla vine that is growing up and kind of winding through these magnificent lanterns that she's got on either side of her front door. She's got some yellow mums. As I said, she loves lots of color. Like me, she's got some great lantana. She has some golden sweet potato vine in here, blue glazed pots, and then she's got just mounds. This is some of that beautiful golden sedum. She's got mounds of pumpkins on either side. 
which makes a beautiful, a, a, just a beautiful vista and a, and a beautiful access when you're coming up from her steps from the street. So it's a very dramatic approach and she has really, I think, emphasized it and optimized it. It's really, really beautiful. I love the, the black painted door. It's very, like I say, it's very, very stately and very, very beautiful. She's got, she has echoed on both sides the same pots with the same elements. Uh, she's got, oh, I didn't notice it over there. She's got some kind of succulent growing out here. So basically she has mirrored plantings on both sides all the way down to the mandevilla that also climbs up on the other magnificent lantern that flanks that side of her home. So now going over to the east side, she's got more of these beautiful orange pansies. She's got some kind of hydrangea in there. I'm not sure exactly what kind it is. She's got, and I didn't mention it on the other side, she's got two sky pencil hollies flanking either side of her front door. And the fact that some of this stuff is doing so beautifully with the southern exposure, I'm going to attribute to the fact that her soil quality I'm, I'm extremely envious of it. She gets a lot of her stuff from, I think, close to the stockyards. Um, I think it's maybe Lawns by Murphy, but she gets, she really is the queen of soil amendment and it definitely shows. She's got beautiful arching appointments over her windows. I am certainly not an, an, uh, an architect and I can't tell you a lot of, the, probably the vintage and the architectural oh, detailing of her home. Somebody out there, here's my question of the day. If you guys are familiar with this style of home, please chime in and fill in the blanks of all of the questions that I have. Um, she's got some azaleas over in here. This is an interesting little appointment and I bet it serves some kind of purpose. I'm not sure what, but probably it serves some kind of water issue that she's got over here. And she's got some azaleas back in there. She's got some really fun lights that hang along this side terrace, which I think is so, so charming. It's on the east side of her house. I happen to know that these French doors, they go into her dining room. So if she's ever entertaining and she wants to do indoor, outdoor entertaining, she can easily do that here with the windows open. Absolutely brilliant. She's got, I'm, I'm, she probably was very mindful of this. Her umbrella is in blue and it looks like it echoes the color of blue of her glazed blue pots. So that for her probably would be a signature touch. She's got, oh, fern, more hosta growing under here. This is another thing that's very surprising to me, you guys. She's got this fabulous crimson queen, very mature Japanese maple. Obviously it's been here for a very long time. So both the previous owner and my friend have tended it very, very well because it's just beautiful. I can't believe that it's handling this southern exposure without just frying. So in some way, perhaps it's protected or this is just a nice little microclimate. And she's very fortunate because it's absolutely beautiful. And then as we round, and one thing I, that's interesting about her house, she has some very straight lines, but she also has some arches that give a clue to how her bed lines should be. And so she's got both arches and straight lines, and she's got a wonderful curve here, kind of a slow curve that mimics to a certain extent the radius of the arches over her windows. And I love that effect. Then she's got a fabulous globosa spruce, blue spruce over here, that is, I, I think, probably in a perfect aspect, a perfect environment for it. She's got another repeating clump of variegated liriope. 
She's got, I have no idea what color rose it is, but she has a rose growing up this arbor that's in the same wrought iron as the same, and has a similar look as the wrought iron railing around her side porch. I can't imagine how beautiful this would be at Easter. Um, more hosta, she's got some penstemon. I love this about her. She's got, I bet this is either a pumpkin vine <laughs> or something that went to seed in here and she just left it and she probably left it for her grandchildren who would take great delight in that kind of thing. On this side, it's also flanked by some more liriope. She's got some verbena over here, um, another rose. This might be my favorite thing. Look at this mossy rock. Is that not just incredible? And she's got some succulents kind of cascading down it. It looks like she's got some, that might be a, some kind of, what's it called? Queen Artemisia um, that's really beautiful. And then she's getting ready to take these out and probably plant more pansies. I think we have our first freeze in the forecast, maybe in a couple of weeks. But these beautiful orange New Guinean patients are what she had growing across the entirety of the front of her house. And as I said, she loves huge jolts of color. And for her, it's all about the color during the summer and the spring. Hi, Oscar. Hi, Oscar. That's her little St. Charles Spaniel, he's so dear. And she's got some just beautiful New Guinea impatience. Like I said, she is all about the soil and soil prep. She's got this magnificent wrought iron gate that goes into her back and we'll save the backyard for another garden tour. But let's get a glimpse of just how spectacular this Vista is going back to her garage. Now, one of my favorite things, if not my favorite thing about her home is the Spanish tile roof. I absolutely adore it. It's very distinctive. It kind of also resonates with the homes that she has surrounding her, which also have very much a Spanish influence. But this is just on, on both sides, you are completely surrounded by color. And so you have this beautiful, colorful walkway. She obviously loves impatiens. So she's got lots of impatiens. I think most of these back here are just traditional ones. She's got some golden money wart. Uh, she's got more sky pencil hollies back in there. It's hard for me to tell what some of those other plants are in the back. But here's just a little glimpse. She's got a fabulous pool in the backyards, but we're gonna reserve that for, for another day. And I love the way, you know, this is one of my favorite things. I love the way she's got these pruned up very high. I don't know if, I can't tell if those are crepe myrtles. They might be crepe myrtles or they might even be just hollies. Um, but even with her magnificent garden, she did not escape some of the trauma of this past year. And this was probably a blue atlas cedar that's been lost. And you can see there's some other things that really were damaged on the west side of the other former home. So there you go. It's just an absolutely magnificent place. She's a magnificent person. And I just wanted to share this with you because it looks so beautiful right now. And Stuart, if you don't mind, because it's another example of a fabulous Oklahoma sky, if you don't mind just slowly turning around and we'll just end up on that gorgeous, gorgeous view of a quintessential Oklahoma fall sky. You guys have a great weekend. 
Well, here's my fashion ensemble for today. If you've held on this long, if not, just go on to the next video. Here are my favorite gold hoop earrings that I got at Madewell. My jacket came from Altered State. I got it on a great discount. And by the way, this faux fur collar is removable. The shirt I have underneath is thrifted. It's a J. Crew thrifted find. Uh, my britches are, I believe, Eddie Bauer. They were also thrifted. My boots are Dover Saddlery. I've had them for a million years. I think they still have them. They're called Muck Boots. You guys have seen me in them many, many times before. And then one of my favorite appointments for fall, one of, I, I love accessories. And they're, it's a really wonderful way to jazz up your outfits, not real expensively, but but also what I like about it is it doesn't really take up a lot of room. Gloves, um, sunglasses, jewelry, they don't really take up a whole lot of room and yet they make a really dramatic impact on what your outfit looks like and how you can kind of mix things up. So I have several pair of red leather gloves. I believe I got these off of Amazon, but I have them in all sorts of different colors that I get from a number of different locations. By the way, I think they make wonderful Christmas gifts for people. So there you go. There's my fashion ensemble for today.